Hello again, everyone, and thank you for joining me today for Get People's Attention with the Power of Your Ideas, Using the Brain for Presentations and Meeting Management. My name is Matt Caton, and I'm the Director of Customer Solutions at the Brain Technologies. Thank you so much for joining us today. We've got a really, really great webinar on how you can use the brain for a really effective, powerful, and memorable presentation. Now, we all know that the juggernaut of presentations in the, the business world is obviously PowerPoint. And I'm going to be focused a lot on using the brain versus PowerPoint. And I'll even conclude with just a side-by-side -side comparison, one presentation in the brain versus that same presentation in PowerPoint, just to talk about the advantages of using the brain for an effective presentation. Now, of course, throughout the call today, or throughout the presentation, rather, I will have the GoToMeeting window open with the chat window. So you can type in any questions that you may have. Patrick Thompson will also be joining us on the call. He'll be trying to answer as many of those questions as we can, and I'll try and answer a few at the end of the presentation as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I'm sharing my screen right now, and as you can see, I'm as you can see, I'm not touching my mouse, so I'm hands-free right now, and the brain is in a mode that we call wander mode. And I'll be talking a little bit more about wander mode in just a moment, but it's an enticing mode within the brain just to sort of get your creative juices flowing. These are many of the different topics that we'll be talking about today. This wander mode can be customized to speed things up, slow things down if you really want people to spend time on each individual slide. Um, I've got it going through cycling fairly rapidly. Hopefully the go-to meeting window is, is keeping up and showing you the smooth animation. Uh, but again, it's just an enticing way to draw people into your meeting and get them focused um, on the brain and all of the topics that you'll be discussing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started just talking about why there are so many different advantages with using the brain for a presentation. And here I am simply on the thought called why. And I've got five topics down below. Let's cycle through those really quickly. First off, focus on core ideas and their ramifications. So the brain actually displays a very concise view. When I click on what we call a thought, those are the building blocks of the brain, it comes into the center of the screen and displays all related information around it. So I've got a very focused view on the current topic that I'm discussing. For example, the very next slide I'm going to click on, or thoughts I'm going to click on, is get busy executives attention. I've clicked on that particular thought that comes into the center of the screen and displays all related information around it, bringing in my focus. Um, a lot of times with a PowerPoint, you know, we're filling the void with, with graphics of business people shaking hands and uh, product uh, pictures grayed out or fuzzed out in the background. And that can add a lot of clutter and a potential buyer or seller or customer can get a little bit lost in, uh, in the content. The brain has a really, really great way of staying focused on the current topic. So getting busy executives attention, our current topic, again, the audience doesn't get lost in the graphics of the slide and a novel presentation means it's something that they're gonna remember. We've all seen PowerPoint. We know how it works. We go slide by slide. Obviously, the topic changes depending on your business or your content, uh, but we know where we're going through the PowerPoint slide as we click from one to the next to the next to the next, whereas the brain offers you the option of a more interactive presentation. We can take questions from the audience at any time and jump to a particular area of the brain or of the presentation that is the focus of the audience or the desire of the audience, what they want to discuss. So it becomes a very memorable tool and it's very easy to navigate through the brain to get to the content that is most relevant at the current time. So we're going to click back to why and come down to our next, which is simply minimizing graphics and artwork requirements. The focus on the brain is the actual topic itself, what you're currently discussing. Now, it's true we can add graphics, and I'll be 
sharing with you some zoomable icons and ways to get graphics implemented into the brain. But for the most part, from time to time, you know, all we really want to focus on is, is our own words, our discussion of the topic at hand. And the brain can be a great way to highlight those topics, uh, again, without the clutter of, of difficult or, or busy graphics. And quite often, uh, graphics are actually hard to create. Not everyone is a graphic artist, so it takes multiple people to create a PowerPoint presentation. You know the subject matter that you are going to be presenting. It's very easy to construct. We do have some very, very useful tools, as you can see, to add very simple icons to thoughts so you can hover over them, or even a zoomable icon uh, to show very large graphics, product graphics, for example. And I'll be getting to some of those in a bit as well. Um, we're simplifying the complex relationships. So when I click on a thought, I'm, I'm simply seeing exactly the focus of that thought and anything related without the clutter of the previous history of, of our products or, or, excuse me, the previous, the past of our products or the history that's coming up down the line. We're simply focused on the current topic at hand. And again, I'll share some of those examples with you. And I'm going to jump over now to the three, three phases within the brain for a better presentation. So prior to the presentation, obviously comes the brain construction, and I'll be building a new brain from scratch to show you how easy it is to construct a brain for your presentations. And that, that actually helps us organize our agenda. Um, and actually notice here on this particular thought, I've got one, two, three, four, five. So I actually have my grouping of thoughts ordered so that I know which thought to hit on next, which topic to discuss next. So suddenly, the presentation itself becomes the script that I'm following. Um, the next item are pins to key thoughts. Once again, helpful components of the brain that can help you navigate your course through the presentation itself. So you may not have noticed at the very top of the screen up, up above, I have a couple of pins that help me easily navigate to very specific thoughts within my brain. And most of the time when I'm using the brain for presentations, people don't even notice that the pins are there. And if I really want to quickly get to a specific topic, a person uh, uh, wants to talk about go back to the beginning of the slide or forward to a key component, component of my organizations, many of those times I'll have those thoughts actually pinned. So I can click on the brain for presentations and it takes me directly back to that specific thought or three phases for better presentations and I go directly to that location. So in other words, if I am specifically talking about my pins and I know my customers are going to be interested in setting up thought pins, I can pin this thought. I know it's going to be a topic of great conversation during my presentation. So I simply right click on the thought and select to create a pin. And this creates a nice shortcut to directly to that specific thought so I can get to it at any, any time. So I'm going to be sharing a lot of different brain examples with you today. Notice when I open up my different brains that I'll have these pins appearing in from time to time to help me in a very large brain to get to a specific thought that I know is going to be of key interest. The next is zoomable icons. Zoomable icons, once again, a great way to bring graphics into the brain. Um, so if I want to find a zoomable icon, for example, I can grab an image off of the web. So I'm actually going to click on F4, and that is the brain's utility for searching the web. And I can change this content. It brings up the thought name. Let's say I want to find a picture here of the Mona Lisa. So I'll change what I'm searching for. And this brings up my web browser. Let me minimize the brain now and jump over to my web browser. There it is. And uh, obviously, I want to get to the images. So when this, once this loads up, I'll click over on images. And now I've got some really nice images of the Mona Lisa that I can simply bring into my presentation. So a couple of different ways I can do this. I can right click on an image, any image that I own or have online to copy that content. Or I can actually right from the brain, right click and select to capture a thought icon. 
And this is a feature I hope to be using a few more times in today's demonstration. This minimizes the brain and shows me whatever was in the background. So I can really zoom in on this particular image. I'll just get a nice zoom of Mona Lisa's face. My cursor becomes a crosshair. So I add that or I capture um, whatever I put in the drag of the crosshair and that becomes my zoomable icon for that specific thought. So again, very, very easy uh, to bring graphics, if desired, into, uh, into the brain. So let me make the brain full screen again, and we'll talk about some of these features as well. Uh, full screen and, and sizing and structure here. Adding thought types and tags are another great way to modify your content. We'll be talking about those a little bit later. But finally, adjusting animation speed as well. You may have noticed when I click on a thought, it's a nice, slow, smooth animation between uh, the thought that I was recently on and the thought that I'm navigating to. Those are all customizable features within your brain. It's something that you can set up ahead of time. If you've got a really fast-paced presentation that you're sharing with your team or um, uh, with the people that you're presenting to, I can right-click on the background and go into my preferences. And I can actually, as you can see, go into the look and feel and make subtle adjustments to how my brain looks and reacts to whatever it is I'm clicking on. Uh, my animation speed, let me come back to look and feel. My animation speed is here at the top of the screen so I can have a real fast or a real slow animation. And of course, if you are going into wander mode, I can click on advanced and there at the bottom, my wander animation set up as well. So how long each individual thought can actually stay on the uh, stay on the screen as you're navigating through wander mode. So moving forward, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other customizations you can do ahead of time uh, to make sure that you've got a powerful presentation. Once again, we can adjust the look and feel and the, the different features of your navigation that you have within the brain. But additionally, you can actually change how your brain is viewed on the screen. Now, I'm just simply full screen right now. But notice I can, once again, right-click on the background and select to, I'm going to go down to my presentation mode. So presentation mode, notice it actually moves things around through the actual screen, uh, moves the windows out of the way, the pop-up tool tabs that you may not see down below, and it goes full screen with what we call the Plex. So we are presented with just the thoughts on the screen that can be navigated without any other clutter appearing on the screen. That's simply called presentation mode. So there's a few different ways that you can get into presentation mode. I can right click to ac access my presentation mode and just click escape to go back to the normal view. And I can also go up to the window. So on a Windows uh, machine, I can go to Windows and go down to presentation mode this way. So a couple of great features uh, to get the presentation mode front and center and go full screen with the brain. At any time, click escape to treat the brain like a typical window for drag and drop examples, et cetera. So now let's go back to the three different steps, the three different phases of a presentation with the brain. And we're moving on into step two during the presentation. So during the course of the presentation, um, I have obviously a few different responsibilities to deliver my message, most importantly, but also I've got many different options, options that I don't typically have, once again, with PowerPoint, for example. Um, with PowerPoint, I'm simply following those slides one by one. If I want to take a note that a customer has for me, or if I want to move to a location, a different topic, that takes a bit of skill. I suddenly have to sort of break the fourth wall, so to speak, close that presentation and either open up another application um, or forward down through my slides from slide number two or three down to slide 25 that the person or customer is most interested in. Um, I call those bypass slides, and we'll be talking a little bit more about that later as well. But during the presentation, you already saw today that I started out in wander mode. So I was just giving you a preview of some of the topics and the technology that we'd be using today uh, in the brain. Step two, 
uh, is presentation mode. Once again, going into that full screen presentation so that we are currently focused on just the brain without any excess windows or tool tabs open. Um, and let's talk a little bit about views as well. So far, everything that I've shared with you today has been in what we call normal view. So you're seeing the current active thought with one generation away from the active thought. If you want to give someone the big picture of your organization, your sales team or your product line, whatever the case may be, we've got a couple of different view capabilities of the brain that could help. So once again, if I'm on phase three for better presentations, I'm going to right click on the background and I'm actually going to change the, the view that I have from normal view to what we call an outline view. And notice now I'm not only seeing step one before the presentation, step two during the presentation, step three, I'm also seeing their child thoughts as well. And of course I can hover over any thought and click on the little plus sign to expand its content as well. So once again, I'm now suddenly seeing the bigger picture throughout my uh, presentation. These are this is everything that we're going to be discussing today. It's a great way to preview all the different topics we'll be going through, and it's also a great way to summarize so we can look back after the presentation and talk about the different components that were discussed today, what is of value, what we can sign off on as a team, etc. So a lot of great advantages to opening up these different types of, of views that we have available. Uh, the next is actually called instant activate. So there's ways to quickly get to thoughts that we need to find right away. Obviously, we used our pins up above, but the search is also a great tool for quickly navigating to a thought. Um, if I specifically want to talk about sharing my brain, this is a product that we have called Team Brain, I can simply start typing in a few letters Oh, and you know what? I haven't indexed this brain yet, so maybe that, uh, that wouldn't be a, a good idea to share with you. Let me see if I can get to, uh, here we go. So if I want to quickly get to a particular thought, such as applications, I can click to go directly to that thought. Let me go back into normal view. That would be a better uh, representation of how this feature is used. So here I've just simply typed in AP. <clears throat> I have actually indexed the brain, so it takes me directly to that applications thought. So you can do this uh, either as a full search and search the content to get to a particular thought that actually has a Word document or a spreadsheet associated with it, or just that instant activate. So if I know I want to look for a thought labeled step two, I can simply type in a few things. So step two during the presentation, and go directly to that thought. So another great way to instantly activate a key component of the brain without having to click around thought to thought, oh, I think it's in this area, no, it might be in that area, or again, such as a, a linear PowerPoint where you're just bypassing slides to get to a particular component. So the brain actually allows you to focus on the particular area that the audience is simply most interested in. And we also have the option of creating new thoughts from the discussion that's taking place during the meeting. If on this particular thought someone has an idea about how we can actually have a, a brain zipped up so that you can take that brain with you and give to the clients, which is a feature, but it's something that I decide we want to talk about at this moment during the, the presentation when giving this presentation in the future, I'll simply create a new thought on the fly. So zipping brains. So throughout the course of the presentation, I can take notes, and again, I'll demonstrate this in a little bit as well, but add links to new thoughts. Creating new thoughts in the brain is a very simple process. I can drag and drop graphics, as you've seen, or capture graphics and icons. I can add new thoughts and new content at any time. So my brain, the presentation itself, actually becomes a learning tool for me. I can actually go home at the end of the day, the end of my presentation and review all the content that I added during the presentation. Maybe there are a couple of key steps that need to be followed up on. Those notes actually happen during the meeting, during the presentation, and I can revisit that at, at any time. And uh, that also falls under the category of collective brainstorming. I'm actually receiving information during my meeting or presentation 
and actually dropping it right into the interface that is guiding me through the presentation. Something you certainly, you can do with, uh, with PowerPoint, but it's not something that is typically done in a PowerPoint presentation to actually open up the slide, add a new cell, add content, add graphics. It's a little more time consuming in PowerPoint and uh, certainly not how you probably want to keep track of your feedback and your notes from your clients where you can do that right from the interface quite easily within the brain. And I'll do that again and again uh, through, the, uh, through the demonstration. And finally, that brings us to our third component of using the brain, and that's the follow-up. After the presentation, again, we've added our meeting notes so we can review those at any time. I can actually run a report. So I'm going to hit Escape here and open up my tool tabs down below. Now I've minimized them by going into presentation mode. I can also click on these little arrows in the upper right hand corner and I can click on my reports. And if I just refresh my reports within my brain, I have an alphabetical listing of all the thoughts in this particular brain. But of course today after the presentation, I wanna view all the thoughts that have been recently modified. So 18 thoughts over the past week were recently modified in, in this particular brain. I can go to modified or even created. And you notice I just created a thought. It's the only thought that I've created in this brain within the last week, and that is zipping brain. So I can very, very easily find all of my content that has been modified in, in this particular brain at the end of the day after that, uh, that presentation to review that content. And returning back to step three, you can also share your brain. So this brain that I've created, I can actually share with other members of my team or even my customers if that's the case. Um, and that's simply done by syncing your brain to the brain cloud. So this brain is a local desktop application, but I can sync this brain at any time up to the cloud, I'll go ahead and say OK. And that'll sync this brain up to the cloud where I can then share it with my other team members. And I'll be demonstrating that process in more detail in a little bit as well. So that involves publishing your brain to the, uh, to the web. And finally, if I'd like, I can zip this brain up and actually give it out to all of my attendees. If they have the brain installed, um, they can extract this zip and continue adding their own content. Obviously, I think that uh, sharing your brain through the URL when syncing it to the cloud is the best idea, but if you're with a group of people that are also using the brain, you can simply click on File and select to create a brain zip. It zips the entire brain up into a single file that it can be easily distributed on a thumb drive uh, or sent over via email. Uh, brain zips can also be downloaded from the web, and as a matter of fact, this brain that I'm demoing today can be download, downloaded from our website. So you can visit www.thebrain.com slash apps, A-P-P-S, and you can actually download the brain for presentations. And this is the brain that you'll receive a copy of, extracted into your own brain to review all the content that we've discussed today. So now let's go ahead and actually start reviewing some of the uh, some of the, some other examples of brains that can be used for presentations. The first example that I'd like to use is this teaching and learning brain. Once again, this is a brain that can be downloaded. I happened to glance over and notice that Ron asked the question, are any of these brains available? And so Ron, to answer your question specifically, yes, you can download these from the brain.com slash apps, and I'm sure Patrick has uh, shared that information with you. Um, but this brain also can be downloaded, and this is a great example of how the brain can be used at, for presentations in an educational environment. That's one of the key components, I would say, or areas of, of expertise that uh, we hear a lot of our brain users using the brain in, whether they're a student mapping out their thesis or their course studies um, or as an educator. Uh, the brain is very, very popular in those areas of use. And actually, you can visit our website and see where um, actually one of our sort of big thinkers in the brain, his name is Dr. Craig Baker. He is the chief cardiac surgeon at USC and uses the brain to educate his students 
uh, the top level students in the country studying cardiac surgery. And uh, his brain is, is there for you to review a video of him using the brain, his students evaluating and using the brain and talking about how the brain is used for presenting educational documentation on, in that case, heart surgery, cardiac surgery. So a very, very interesting case use study. And that link is also on, available on our website. And I'll share that with you a little bit later today as well. So let's jump into my example of the teaching brain. And this is something that I wanted to share with you uh, first in relation to Visio. So many times in the past, I've, I've been to meetings and it starts off with a Visio diagram. Whether you're an engineer and you're mapping out your IT department or the product development, the product life cycle, um, Visio is sometimes a, a popular uh, presentation tool because you can see all the relationships on the screen and talk about how each one is going to work and then print that out for everyone to take home with them. But the brain brings a Visio diagram to life. Um, and here you can see if I just go into my area for bio biological studies, so biology, and uh, you can see obviously I've got a very, very simple sort of Visio diagram of the animal kingdoms. So we start off with the kingdom, the phylum, the class, the order, etc. But once again, seeing that information come to life and spending some time in each different area and seeing other related areas on the screen without all the clutter of step A all the way down through step Z, zooming in on the information you're looking for is the advantage the brain brings you here. So I'm going to click on the animal kingdom. And notice when I mouse over each thought, I see that I'm in the kingdom. The next one to below are the phylum, uh, so chordata. And I'll go into the mammal class. And I'm just navigating down through topics that I'm interested in. So here we are into carnivores, and I can click on cats and view some of the different cat species uh, that I have information on, sometimes with zoomable icons for panthers, pumas, etc. And obviously, I could have notes and file attachments associated down below. Uh, in fact, I believe I do. If I click here on links, um, I've got a lot of different information about the different species of links that are available. Um, now, I don't have an icon on this one, so I'm going to share that with you. That seems to be a popular, and I saw that come up um, in questions for a couple of times. So I'm just going to right-click on links since this is a one I don't have information available on yet, and I'll select to search the web actually first. So I'll just do my F4, and yes, I'll search Google for the links. So that's going to bring up my web browser. So I brought it up on another screen. And there's my information on the links. I can go into Wikipedia, and in this case, I'll first just drag and drop the web page right into the links thought. So right from my browser, I can drag and drop and link that web page. So any URL can be drag and dropped right into the brain. We can also, again, search the web and find some graphics. So I'll add some images for links. And uh, oh, I like the toothy there, there. So I'm just going to right click on my thought and select to add an attachment. Not add attachment, excuse me, I'm going to capture a thought icon. So once again, that brings back my crosshairs and I can just click and drag. So there's my picture of the links that I'll see when I mouse over that thought. And I have my web attachment and I can even paste some notes in the notes area down below. The brain is fa a fantastic tool for note, note taking. That's why it's so great for meeting management, creating check boxes and to-do lists in your notes section. In this case, maybe I just simply want to go back and copy this first paragraph. Rather than linking to the entire web page, I'll just grab this paragraph, copy that text, and here in my notes uh, for the links, rearrange my uh, size here. There in the notes section, I'll just simply right click and paste that content directly into the notes area. So again, the notes area, a popular feature that I like, and I think I'll have time to demo this later, would be the checklist and timestamp. Really, really great for meeting management, but anything can be pasted, including graphics there into your notes uh, for easy access to that content. And additionally, I can also link to other existing content within my brain. Um, I'm studying links right now. I'm presenting on links, and someone in the uh, 
audience asked about the environmental impact on logging and forestation and things of that nature. So I'm going to just do a quick search in this brain for any environmental thoughts. And I do have environmental impact of deforestation. So rather than create a new thought for that, I'm simply going to link to that existing thought. This thought has a Word document associated with it, so we can research that area as well. And I can always come back and um, and talk about the relationship between these two thoughts in future demonstrations. So I'm actually modifying my presentation um, as I go through the process of clicking down through these thoughts and finding content. In addition, I also want to share with you that you can actually change the relationships between thoughts at any time, whether it's how they're linked as a child thought, parent thought, or jump thought, or the reason why they're linked. And this is really important as well. And I'll see this from time to time and in, in use this feature in my brains to explain the relationship. Maybe in this case, the relationship between links and environmental impact. Uh, this is a common student question. So I simply want to right click and edit the link. And I'll add common question actual link. So I can see environmental impact, links, common question is what is their relationship. And I'll be reminded of that when I come to this thought in the future for a future presentation. So it's really easy to explain why two thoughts are linked to one another. And once again, we're just adding greater context for our audience that is viewing the brain. Rather than that linear PowerPoint presentation, slide one goes to slide two, you don't really know why, you have to explain why, whereas here in the brain the audience can see for themselves. It's a very, very common question about what deforestation is doing with this particular species. So let's go ahead and jump to a, another area of the brain, and in this case I really want to show off the use of thought types. We can right click on a thought to add a thought type, and a thought type is a sort of a classification of a particular thought. You notice as I was clicking down through the species, phylum, order, family, class, etc., those are all thought types. And, and this is another great example of when thought types come into play. Let me go once again, I'm going to minimize my, uh, my notes windows down below. So I just click on the little arrow buttons in the upper right hand corner. And here you can see I'm in sort of the political uh, uh, history of, of the United States, this area of, of my brain. And obviously I have down below on the screen right now the U.S. presidents, and there they are, all 44 of them in order. So starting with George Washington, number one, two, three, all the way down through current 44, and soon I'll have a 45 and someone to add there as well. Um, so this is a growing area of my brain that evolves every four years potentially, um, and an area that I like to use to, uh, uh, to show a great example of what we call thought types. So again, a thought type is a classification of a thought, but you don't always want to just create a single thought called order, phylum, class, as, such as in the species area or the biology area earlier. You simply want them falling in the, the order of their structure, how they're classified. And in this case, I didn't want to have a classification of thoughts called here are the Republican presidents and here are the Democratic presidents. I want one thought for presidents, all of them underneath, but I want to visually identify who's a Republican, who's a Democrat, who is a Federalist, and who's independent, because we have those presidents in our history as well. And notice I can mouse over William Henry Harrison. There he is. He's a Federalist. John Taylor, Federalist. Then we get into Democrats. Abraham Lincoln, Republican. So I get that nice visual identification of, of what party the president falls into. And I'm ordering the thoughts by, this is actually alphabetical, but I started it with the number. So one, two, three, four. I can right click on the background and arrange thoughts by thought type. So this is another really key feature with presentations or with any brain that you're creating really. Just the ability to group thoughts of similar types together. Quite often I'll have in my meeting notes for meeting management, um, here are my notes, here are my art assets that were discussed, here are the files or documentation and resources that were used. And if that meeting was a long one day meeting with all of our key sales uh, reps, et cetera, 
that could have, be hundreds of different documents. But I can visualize, here's meeting that took place today, and here are all the different topics that were discussed. And I link to those topics, they're thought typed, and therefore grouped together. In this case, grouped together by their uh, association with a particular party. So now suddenly I'm seeing in order all the Democrats, it's just alphabetical, so it starts with the Federalists, uh, there's my one independent, George Washington, and the Republicans. So just another option that you have to group thoughts for uh, easy navigation through and an understanding of, uh, of, of the different relationships this grouping of thoughts may have. And I also want to jump into another area of, of the brain, and that's simply talking a little bit more to the idea of bringing in focused content. So let's say I, put, I click on a particular president here. I'll click on FDR, president number 32. And notice that I'm linking FDR to all of his uh, different, um, uh, and obviously this is just a, a, an overview of, of FDR's presidency. There's much more to it than these three thoughts. But notice I have FDR linked up to the New Deal, one of his uh, sort of policies as the president. That is a direct result of the Great Depression. Uh, the Great Depression, which links into World War II, the clash of, uh, or the Wall Street crash, rather, of 1929. Now, I mentioned earlier you can move thoughts around throughout the brain, and this is an area where I like to uh, actually talk about that and use this as an example. Was the Great Depression a result of the Wall Street crash of 1929, or was the Great crash of Wall Street in 1929, a result of the Great Depression. So something that could very easily be debated within a class uh, throughout the course of a day. And notice that I can easily change the structure of my brain. Instead of Wall Street crash being a parent up above the Great Depression, it's now a child thought, a subcategory below the Great Depression. Um, which is right and which is wrong, I'll leave that up to the experts, but this is just a nice example of how throughout the course of your presentation, you can easily modify the content at any time, rename thoughts, add attachments, or restructure how the attachments are actually connected to one another. And with that, I actually want to now jump into another brain example, and this is where I'd like to start by creating a thought, or a brain rather, from scratch, and then show you the end result and compare that brain against a PowerPoint presentation. So I'm going to create a new brain right now. I simply click on File, New Brain, and notice that we do have some brain templates. If you're ever interested in creating a, uh, a brain that you just want to play around with, or maybe you want to create a business brain but start with sort of the seed of our content and then modify it from there, you can certainly do that. These are brain templates that you can use for experimentation or once again to turn and modify into your own brain structure. Now I'm gonna start quite simply from scratch. I'll call this my furniture business. I will not select one of the templates. And this starts me out with just a single thought in the center of the screen. So let me share with you how quickly and easily you can create a new brain from scratch and then I'll sort of fast forward through time to show you the end result. So under my furniture business, I like to click and drag off the, the gates to create new thoughts. So I'm going to have my product line. I'm also going to have a thought for my customers. And we'll do uh, an area for all of my forms. Now let's start with the product line. I'm going to be building chairs and tables and cabinets and, and all different types of furniture. I know what they all are off the top of my head, so I want to share with you a shortcut for creating groups of thoughts, uh, and that is quite simply with the semicolon. So I type in chair, hit semicolon, table, semicolon. Uh, we'll do side table and cabinet. So notice I separated these with the semicolon, and when I click on the check, those are four individual thoughts created for me at one time. A really, really great saver, a time saver, if you're just getting started with, uh, with building a, a particular brain. 
Now in chair er, the chair area, I actually have some existing content. So let me open up my Laura Bloom folder. So here are some of the chairs that I have. Notice I can actually drag and drop that image right into the brain. That creates a new thought with whatever the file name was. In this case, it was a JPEG. Anytime you bring a graphic into the brain, you're actually uh, adding that image as a zoomable icon. So you saw me creating zoomable icons earlier by uh, selecting the feature to capture a thought icon. That gives me the crosshairs to capture an image out on the web. In this case, I own the picture. I simply drag and drop it into the brain, creates a new thought, and the image, since it's a JPEG, works for GIFs, pings, JPEGs. Um, it gives me that nice zoomable icon. So during my presentation with my client, I can mouse over the chair thought, and actually the, the client gets a nice visual representation of what that chair looks like. Now I can do the same with files as well. So I'm going to jump over here into my area for forms. And I've got a couple of order forms that I've already created. So my large order form and my short order form. Now if I just drag and drop into the brain, that creates a shortcut back to that thought. That's the default for the brain. You can modify that default uh, option in your preferences uh, by changing that to move files. When you drag and drop, it automatically moves file into the brain. Now the advantages to doing those is quite simply whatever fits your environment. Um, if you are in a business environment, you're VPNed in or you're on a network, you've got access to a shared drive, obviously moving files out of a shared drive where your colleagues have access as well is not going to benefit them. Um, suddenly they won't be able to get to their fi the file, you've moved it onto your local drive. So a shortcut may work best. Um, I personally do like to move my files into the brain so that the files go wherever the brain goes. Once again, we talked about zipping up our brains or syncing our brains to the cloud. And um, that will actually bring with it, when you sync to the cloud or zip up your brain, all of your internal attachments will be included in that brain. So therefore, for long order form or large order form, I'm going to hold down Control Shift and drag and drop into the brain. And notice that large order form is now gone and that file has been moved internally into my brain. So there I have an internal attachment um, and a shortcut. And I can see the little black arrow icon also signifying that that is a shortcut. I can always right click on a shortcut and select to move the file into the brain or copy the file into the brain. So I'll move. Notice it no longer exists out in my directory. That file has been moved into the brain. I can also right click on an internal file and select to move file out of the brain. So really the choice is yours, however you want to construct the, the brain that you're, you are creating. And finally, one last component before I sort of fast forward to what this brain can really look like is uh, to go into my customers, and let's say I've got a customer named Tim Struthers. And obviously down below in the notes, I have a meeting with Tim. I'm going to open up my notes. And Tim wants to see, whoops, click that one more time. Tim wants to see in our next meeting, and here's where I get to really use some of the features that I like in the notes uh, for meeting management. Tim wants to see a future forecast of modern furniture. So some of the things that we're going to be building in the future. I spelled forecast wrong. Thank goodness for spell check. Um, Tim also wants to order uh, 20 chairs. So I just have the one chair there that I've linked to so far. But this, is again, is a great feature of the brain. Right during the meeting, if I scroll past a particular product that a customer is interested in, and they say, I love that product. I would order 20 of those right now. Let's close the sale. Let's get that order in taken care of right now. So right away as I'm typing it in, oh, you're interested in 20 chairs? That's great. I'm going to link Tim to the order form. So there's the short order form. And he's interested in my chair my chair line that I'm creating. So I link it up to there. So once again, I've got more context. 
I've got a whole series of different chairs that I'm building. Tim Struthers, one of my customers, is interested in that product. In fact, in our last meeting, he completed an order for that product. And this information will stay in the brain. So as I move forward, obviously with other clients and customers, I'm not going to visit this Tim Struthers thought. Uh, but when I do sit down with Tim, again, the meeting is tailored to him. Tim, last time we sat down, you ordered 20 chairs. How did you feel about those and how do you like them? Obviously, I'm going to timestamp when that uh, purchase took place. Tim loves the chairs. Well, guess what, Tim? I've got chair 2.0 in the future, and I can start presenting that content to them as well. So suddenly, my presentation becomes an interactive discussion. It's a history of our past presentations as well, and it moves them in the right direction for both Tim and myself in the future. So now let's go ahead and look about at what this particular brain can look like. I'm going to actually open up my Laura Bloom Furniture Company brain, and I'm going to do that side by side with a PowerPoint presentation. So the same content that I have here in my Laura Bloom Furniture Company brain, let me minimize my tool tabs down below, and I'm going to open up my PowerPoint. So here is my PowerPoint. And let's say I'm sitting down with Tim for the first time. So obviously I go into uh, slideshow mode. And I don't use PowerPoint that often. I've already lost, uh, here we go, here we go, slideshow. So from the beginning. So thank you, Tim, for joining me today. And now suddenly this slideshow is tailored towards a new customer. I'm talking about the history of the company, uh, what happened then, what it, the tools that we use now, the different products and sustainable forests that we're harvesting from and the team that, that's putting it all together. And we start with the bedroom set. Tim's not interested in any of this content. He knows the history of my company. He's purchased from me before. He's interested in the modern chairs. All right, stand by, Tim. Let's just get through the bedroom set. There's the old vintage chairs. They're in here somewhere. Ah, here we go, modern chairs. So I had to go through those bypass slides. Suddenly, Tim's not feeling so special anymore. Um, I didn't tailor this presentation directly to Tim, whereas we sit down and I can go to Tim's thoughts. Let's say this uh, particular Tim is, let's type in there, let's say this is Tom Turlington. So I don't have a thought. I don't have an actual customer named Tim either. So uh, here's Tom Turlington, and now, Tom, great, you purchased from us in 2013, 2014. Here are some of the products you've purchased, this top secret product that we've been working on, this fancy new modern end table is now available. I've got information on that. Tim's ready to place an order. Fantastic. We're going to go right to the order form. So here's the large order form. We can open up this content and start creating a new order directly for Tim. That meeting lasted about 20 seconds and I'm already processing a sale. So the meeting with the content was tailored directly towards the customer. So, and the same information that was in, um, in the PowerPoint presentation is available here in this brain as well. Notice that I've used those slideshows from the original, um, from the original PowerPoint presentation and I just screen grab them. So that picture of the craftsman um, I have right here in my brain as well. So if you already have an existing uh, PowerPoint presentation that you want to bring into the brain, once again, you can use that capture thought icon and just grab images of your PowerPoint slides to place them into the brain and then continue adding more context, whether it's in the notes or in this case, more links. I actually have links to the people that work on my team. And I can see that Brendan is the key designer for the cottage leather armchair. In the cottage leather, leather armchair, I have links to our top seller. If anyone knows this chair, it's going to be Chrissy. She sells more of these chairs uh, as a salesperson than anyone else. And Tom is the actual builder of the chair. So he knows about the construction, how much weight it can take, etc. So just greater information and context and gets me directly to areas that are of the most interest to my clients as well here in this area of the brain. So with that, um, the last step that I wanted to share with you today is that everything obviously that I've done here today is local on my local desktop. Let's say I now want to share this presentation with the rest of my sales team so they, they can go out and with, sit down with their customers 
talk about all the different components of our products, who's buying them, take notes, add additional information. So I'm going to sync this brain to the cloud. And there's actually multiple advantages to syncing your brain to the cloud. We've taken a presentation that I've created on my desktop, and I've now made it available online. So even if I sit down with a particular client, or let's say I'm in a store one day, a furniture store, and they want to know more about my business, I can actually open this brain up online and at, on the drop of a hat, give them a quick little presentation about the history of my company, the different products we make. And that's all available at thebrain.com once I log in. So here I am on thebrain.com, and I'll go to the login screen. Let me bring that on the right monitor here. So I'm going to log in, and all of the brains that I've synced to the cloud are now accessible to me online. So there's my Laura Bloom Furniture Company brain. I'll put the two side by side. This is my online demo that I can give. And to the right, is the local version. So whether I am only online, I don't have access to my own personal computer where my brain resides, I can actually give a demonstration on vintage mission furniture, the dining room chairs, etc., cetera, uh, right here from the web. If I don't even have access to a computer, I can actually open that up, the web interface right here through my phone. So I don't see myself on... Uh, Hopefully I'm sharing my, my screen right now. There I am. So yes, so you can see I can actually launch a brain. And there it's launching right on my iPhone. iPhone, iPad, or from your Android device as well. Um, you can actually give a presentation while you're riding the subway to a potential client that you've just struck up a conversation with. So your information is available in more locations. But more importantly, we can also share this information with colleagues or with clients. So I'm going to go into the settings now that I have this brain online. And notice that I'm sharing this brain with Shelly as an editor. So Shelly can actually add content to this brain, add her own modifications, give the presentation, take orders right there from the, uh, from the presentation, actually take a client order. And I can share this with other users either as an editor or let's say I've got a customer. I'll add Patrick. There we go. So I can actually add Patrick now as a as either an editor or as a reader. So there's Patrick. Oh, I clicked on the wrong one. There's Patrick. And I'll add Patrick simply as a reader. So Patrick will have a read-only access to this brain. And I can save this at the bottom of the screen. And Patrick will actually receive my invitation via email to this read-only brain. Another option is to make sure this brain is publicly accessible. So again, in the settings, uh, this particular brain is publicly accessible. There's actually a link to this brain uh, from our website. But um, every brain that you sync to the cloud is by default going to be private. So it's only available by you. Uh, you have to log in to actually access that brain online. But you can switch that brain to being unlisted or public. So this is a public brain, which means when I actually open this brain online, I can right click in the background and select share. And there is a URL that will take me directly to this thought in this brain. I can tweet that URL out or post it up on my, my message forum or uh, send it off to a customer saying, hey, we've got a whole new line of vintage furniture uh, available. I think you might be interested in. And, and this will take them directly to that specific thought in this brain that I have accessible online. Now, if you're sharing your brain online, you probably don't want to share a brain that also has customer information, order forms, etc. So you can actually copy components of a brain, paste them into separate brains, and sync those online. Those are some of the more advanced features that we have within the brain application. So if you'd like to know more about some of those advanced features, we've got some great tutorials on our website at thebrain.com slash tutorials. There's more information there about sharing brains online and divvying brains up from smaller topics uh, or massive brains into smaller topic-specific brains, and how you can share those brains, other methods for sharing those brains online. So that's all available on our website.
And also you can always join one of our Brain 101 classes in the future. Um, every Friday we hold a Brain 101 and you can sign up again at our website and we go into, again, just this beginning, just the from scratch creating a new brain, thought by thought, adding files and attachments, and then answering very specific questions that you may have. It looks like Patrick has had a great uh, run here on the question panel. I see that we're almost at the top of the hour. So I'll see if there's a couple of questions that maybe I can answer uh, really quickly for you. So Patrick, let sure, me know yeah. if there's any uh, questions. Thanks for handling the question panel. And let's see if no we problem. have a couple of questions that we can demo. Uh, one question, sure, from uh, Danique was, how do you limit the, the thoughts that you're including in a presentation? Oh, great. That's a, that's a great question. So, again, there's a few different ways to do that. Uh, let me jump back to my desktop version, and I want to share a few tricks with you. These are some more advanced features, but some that you may be interested in. Um, so, first off, let's say, for example, we're going to be giving a presentation, and we don't need all that extra customer information. This is a brand new uh, customer that has specifically told us, look, we're only interested in your modern furniture line. We don't know, need to know about the history of the company, the vintage furniture that's of no interest to them. We're a brand new, modern, edgy company. Show us your products and give us your prices. So obviously I can go into the meeting and only stay in this area of my brain. But if I want to not distract them at all, not accidentally click on another thought, what I'm going to do is I'm going to control click. And if you're on a Mac today, you would do this with a command click. I'm going to control click on this thought called modern. So this thought and everything down below is really what this new client is going to be interested in. Um, I'll grab the jump thoughts as well. So I've added modern to my selection box with a control click. Now I'm going to right click over here on the left and select to crawl and modify my selection. So adding to my selection box, I'm going to select every child word and jump word thought. So everything below or a jump to the left. And I'll go about uh, four generations down and say, OK. And just in four generations away from this modern furniture, you can see that I've gathered about uh, quite a nice little list of thoughts. This is really the content that this particular customer is going to be interested in. So I'm going to right click and select to copy those selected thoughts. And I'll create a new brain simply called modern. So I did not select from one of my templates down below. I've copied those modern thoughts. And I come in and right click on the background and select to paste thoughts. It pastes everything. All the file attachments, the graphics, thought types and tags, any notes that I had in the note window. It's going to paste those all into this brain. So everything that was a child or a jump thought. Now, I may have picked up a couple of thoughts. In fact, I already know that I did because I saw them in the list. Um, so I'll take this one step further. This is really the content that my new customer is going to be interested in. But I also saw that Tom Turlington, he's a jump thought that fit that category. He's only three clicks away. But this is not a thought that my new client is going to be interested in. So I've got a couple of more options. Now I can sync this brain to the cloud and show them this brain. I can, if I'm going to share this brain with them online as a read-only user, I can actually open up the tool tabs down below. There we go. So I can open up the tool tabs down below and for the Tom Turlington thought, I can select private. Now when I sync this brain to the cloud, and I can do that also by control clicking on a group of thoughts, right clicking, and making them all private. So privacy, make private. So now when I sync this brain to the cloud, any read-only user will not see them. So I can give my demonstration through the cloud interface, and all these thoughts that you currently see marked as private will not be displayed uh, for them as they navigate through the brain online. There is another option, a little bit more advanced, but I can do a, run a report. So in my report, I'll run a special report to show me all of my private thoughts. Um, so there they are. This is the grouping of thoughts that I selected to mark as private. And there's only 12 in this very large brain. But now before I go into my 
Um, uh, before I go into my meeting, let me expand this just a little bit. So before I go into my meeting, I want to filter these thoughts. Notice that I can click on normal filter, so that means anything not in this list is not going to be displayed. In this case, I want to do an inverse. And anything that's appearing in this thought, they have not been deleted, they're simply not being displayed. Now I can click through the brain, I can run a search. Um, any thought that I click on, I'm not going to worry about it at all. I've got all of my new designs. Notice Tom Turlington is not showing up. If I go down into my chairs, he was linked as a jump thought over to the fold chair. Nope, he's not there because I have him filtered out right now. So that's a filter that you can run on your reports. If the thoughts are still there. I can go back to my reports at any time and turn my filtering off. And notice that some of the thoughts that were showing up as private have now reappeared there in the brain. So a couple of different features that you can do. Segment your brain into a smaller brain. Share that. Um, you can turn on some private thoughts or turn on filtering. And there's many different ways that you can filter. I just filtered out my private thoughts. I can also go into a massive brain and say, all right, I want to filter out any that is labeled as top secret as the thought type or as the thought tag, or I want to filter out any thought that was created within the past two weeks. So I run a report for creation dates and filter those thoughts out before I step into my presentation. So a little bit of legwork ahead of time, and you'll get exactly what you're looking for. And I think we're a little bit over the hour, but Patrick, really quickly, I'll open it up for one more question that we may have. Your choice. We have a couple more questions, if you don't mind. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, let's go, let's go for it. So. So Austin has a question on, uh, can you give us a, a, an example of more of a graphic-driven presentation in the brain, like with images? And Absolutely, absolutely. Many of these images that I have, notice that I'm just going to mouse over uh, my thoughts. So all of my actual products have a graphic associated with them. Anytime I mouse over one, it's got that zoomable icon. And again, there's many different ways that you can add these zoomable icons. You can capture them from the web. If you own the actual image, you can drag and drop it directly into the brain. Um, the last brain that I was just recently in actually had some more examples. Um, and I just kind of glossed over these really, really quickly uh, just because we had so much to demo today. But notice in the vintage mission area, we've got entire sets. And so I can go full screen once again with the brain, minimize my tool tabs down below, mouse over a thought, and this particular image zooms out into my entire living room collection, group two. So I can see product ID numbers with their title, all the different images of my products. Um, so there's definitely a lot you can do with attaching icons and images to thoughts. Um, I didn't do this today, but you can actually grab and bring in multiple images on a single thought just as attachments. So right here on my thought tool tab for living room, let's say I've got a lot of chairs here. I've got four. I'm going to gather all of these, right click, I'm going to copy and paste these. So those are all paste, pasted in as attachments. So a thought can contain anything from a Word document to a spreadsheet. Um, I've assigned this as an icon, but notice that the icon now is telling me there's the number four, if you see it in the lower right-hand corner. Um, it's telling me that there are four attachments for that particular thought. And of course, I can double-click on any one of these, and that's going to open in my default application for whatever that file type is. So from the actual brain itself, you can launch other applications very easily. I can launch Word, Excel, or in this case, launch my image viewers for, uh, for images. So if I don't want to simply mouse over and I want to scroll through a whole series of image, I can double click uh, there. And finally, one more component along those lines. Let's say in the living room, I've got retired living room set. Um, I can simply add an image from the brain's icon library. Um, I do that for many of my brains just to quickly visually identify what the content of that thought is going to be. So for retired, I'll right click and rather than capturing a thought icon, an image from the somewhere on the desktop, I'll select the brain's select thought icon option. This takes me into the brain's icon library and you can do this for every individual thought if you want a simple graphic on that thought. 
So under retired uh, furniture, I'll go into maybe objects and just pick some random uh, item. Let's say we want this little roadblock sign. So these are a uh, little street construction cone sign. Um, whatever image you feel represents that particular thought. So you can do that for each individual thought or thought type, uh, applying images to thoughts. And notice here in this particular brain, every thought that I'm seeing on the screen has some type of, of image associated with it. So it definitely can be image oriented within the application. Great. Uh, one more question uh, from okay. Kai is, uh, if, if a brain is synced to the cloud, can it be used for doing a guided presentation without GoToMeeting or any other desktop sharing app? Like how do you share a brain on the cloud? Absolutely. Yes. We share brains quite often in many different ways. That's a great question, uh, Patrick and Kai. Thanks for asking. Um, obviously, we're sending, um, uh, sending out brain examples uh, from time to time and uh, giving presentations in many different ways. I do give presentations on my phone from the web from time to time. Uh, but let me take you to another brain example. I uh, was not planning on using this today, but it just sort of rang a bell. So I'm going to open a brain. And uh, it's been a while since I've used this brain. There it is, Starling Labs. I think this is it, Scout Laboratories. So this is a brain that actually has an area in the brain where it takes the person through sort of a script, a guided tour. So they're giving themselves their, their, their own uh, path to follow. And an entire brain can be set up this way. And this is for new client procedures. So what are the procedures for a new client? Let's say this is what you're presenting to a group of colleagues. You send this brain to them that maybe only has this area, not the other stuff. Uh, step one is a face-to-face. -face. But notice this is a very linear step-by-step. -step. But from time to time, new client procedure, step one is to have a face-to-face -face with the new client. And then you ask yourself, was that meeting a success, yes or no? So now I'm not just going slide one, slide two, slide three, I get to a branch and I either say, was it a procedure yes or no? If it's yes, then we send them the new client uh, non-disclosure. And they choose, do they want one year, five years, or 10 years? Um, I want to be a gold contract, so I'm going to go with the 10 year. And the next question, are there any disputes? They read through the, through the paperwork, was there a dispute, yes or no? Uh, if there was a dispute, then great. It takes them directly over to legal. Our job is done not until they're done with legal department does it come back to us. If there were no disputes, then they are a full-time distributor, and it goes on from there. Um, but what I really like, let me go back to this thought of a uh, new client procedure, face-to-face. -face. Was it a success, yes or no? If it's no, then they run through a two-month check-in. If that didn't go well, there's a one-year check-in. If it did go well, you circle back to that new client disclosure uh, that we were on earlier. So it takes you back to that thought. So you're really giving yourself a self-guided tour of a particular process. And this can be for a type of presentation, what have you, where the clients themselves just simply receive a link from the web and they start on a particular thought and the brain tells them what to do from there. You can even label them step one, step through. Two, step three, you have a decision to make, and it goes to four different categories. And the category you choose is the direction you go in with the presentation from there. So that's a great, great question. Can people give their, basically receive a presentation on themselves without you, without you being there? And yes, they certainly can, and the brain can be constructed in such a way to walk them through that process, whether they receive it via a web link or via the, uh, the web online. So you just go to a brain you've published, right click and capture that uh, thoughts URL and send them that, uh, that particular link. And with that, we're uh, 10 minutes over. Patrick, any time for, for more questions or should we wrap it up from there? I think that covers it. Great That's job. fantastic. Well, thanks. I see, Patrick, you were very busy on the, uh, the question panel there today. And uh, I want to let everyone out there know that Patrick and I are always available. You can reach us at support at thebrain.com. We're happy to hear from you to answer any additional questions that you may have 
or that, uh, that possibly we didn't uh, get a chance to cover a feature that you were interested in today, we'd love to hear from you and help you out. Um, also, some great resources available on our website, thebrain.com, and every Friday, The Brain 101. So you can sign up for The Brain 101 for uh, more step-by-step, from scratch instructions on getting started with the brain. So with that, thank you everyone. We'll be sending out an email with a recording of today's webinar, as well as links to some of the brains that we used for our presentation examples. So you'll be receiving that from us tomorrow. Thanks everyone for joining us. Have a great week and enjoy your brain. Bye everyone.